this will be some sort of guide for uh, consumers, collectors who are looking to buy custom knives or knives by a custom maker, maybe not a commission knife. And for makers on how to better advertise their knives so that the customer can try and evaluate if the knife is good or bad. Uh, so first off, I've been buying lots of custom knives and selling, uh, and I've also uh, had the fortune to try quite a few. Uh, I don't have the biggest collection in any sense, but I think I have some some good inputs to give. So first off, uh, if you want a good knife, uh, I have a Victorinox that I have thinned. It's a really good knife. I also have a Takamura which is also a really good knife, if you want a thin knife and really experience what a Japanese knife can be. So going into customs should not perhaps only be to get the best performance, but because you appreciate the art, because you want to support uh, a small maker, or that you find some uh, aesthetic uh, reward in it. But that's just a, a fair warning that you, you, you can get really good um, quality without going custom so consider if it's for you so the first advice I would give for someone looking to get a custom or buy from from a small maker is to get a good feel for what the maker does it's not a good idea to have your mindset on a knife you want and then force a maker to do that knife make sure to kind of understand what what you eat what, what, what the maker does well, and then buy the maker and trust that the maker will provide you with a good steel, good geometry, and so forth. And I also recommend you to speak to people you trust. There are lots of people out there who know a lot. Try and find those people and get information from them. Um, I've been doing that in lot, lots of my purchases, finding people that I rely on to give me advice. But a few things to look at. Uh, when you see a knife in pictures, uh, one of the easiest and best things you can look for is that you can look and try and see how wide is the bevel. And as you can see here, it's even difficult to show it in the picture or in the movie, but the edge bevel is really thin. And it's equally thin along the entire edge. This tells me, looking at the knife, that the knife has a really good geometry that comes down to a tight apex upon which the final bevel is placed. And you want that to be thin. So when I, when I look at knives, uh, I always stay away from knives that have a, a large edge bevel. Uh, because that tells me that, or, or it's a sign that the knife might not be as thinly ground as it should be. Another thing we usually look for is a, a choil shot. And as you can see on this knife, it has a really thick choil, so it will not be a good performer if you want to use it to cut potatoes. A good knife should be thin behind the edge and come down almost to an edge. So that even if I dull the very apex of the knife, it will still cut pretty well, just because the geometry of the knife is so thin. And recognizing this is picture in picture will take some training. But one of the key things you should look for, which is really difficult to show here, is that there should no be any hard transitions up on the edge. Everything should be smooth coming down to an edge with a micro bevel that is so small that you barely can see it. Once you get more feel for it or if you can handle the knife, you will be able to feel this with your fingers. To, but uh, that will take experience actually handling the knives. If you're able to get measurements on the knife, um, and I've measured all the knives I have, a, a, good, a few good measurements know is that if you measure just behind the edge, and you, you, I mean you can't even see the edge here, but if you measure just behind the edge, the thickness should be somewhere or let's say like this, it shouldn't be more than 0.2 millimeters. If it's more, the geometry is not ground down thinly enough. I've also measured a lot of knives 10 millimeters from the edge, like this, at various points of the blade. 
And good performing knives are usually, like the thin ones are perhaps 0.7 millimeters, the very thinnest I've tried. And the thickest I've tried that I like are up to 1.5 millimeters. At that point, it also depends on how it's done. Uh, some makers make a concave bevel that is followed by a convex, or they just make concave um, bevels down. And depending on how it's made, it will have an impact, but a good range to look for is between that 0.7 millimeters and 1.5 millimeters. And then, of course, if a knife is this thick at the spine, and it doesn't have a good transition all the way from edge to spine, it might not still be a good cutter, but the measurement 10 millimeters above the edge, that's a good good thing to kind of look out for and perhaps ask for if you're unsure. So another thing to look for is if you're buying a Sanmai knife or any clad knife, you can see the clad line here. And a good maker is able to do the clad line relatively even and relatively close to the edge. That's that's a sign that it's a good it's a good blacksmith. Now this will depend on what type of hammer the maker is using. So this is Björn Birgesson and he's using an, a hammer that is really good for this. Whereas some makers use other hammers where it's where it's more difficult to get such a clean line between the the clad and the core steel. But if it starts to look wonky, or if the clad extends all that way down to the edge, um, especially the later one, I would stay away. With a small uh, exception to that, that some makers like the wavy clad for aesthetic effect. And, and I mean, it's not wrong, but um, it's more what you like, but a good a sign of a good maker is that they are able to make a really good and tight clad line. Another thing to look for if you're looking into getting a honyaki is that a, a honyaki, in my opinion, should have a pleasing hamon line. And this is very difficult to capture, as you understand with this mirror edge. <laughs> but a good thing to consider from my limited knowledge, is that the the uh, hamon should usually follow the sweep of the blade in an aesthetic manner. And it's also important to consider that the steel above the hamon, that is not as hard as the steel below the hamon. So if the hamon is pushed down really far to the edge, that's a sign of the hamon not being good, or, or the quenching not being good. Because when you sharpen, as you remove the hard material, you will get into soft territory. And if the uh, hamon line is close to the edge, your life won't have as long of a life. Uh, and I've seen knives being sold with the hamon line extending all the way out to the edge. And I think it's, it's an embarrassment to be a maker that sells such a knife. Uh, one thing I've also been looking into quite a bit is is how far forward the handle placement is so if you look at these Japanese style handles you want to be able to pinch the blade get your finger in without the without the front part of the middle finger getting uncomfortable and in my opinion there is quite a bit of tolerance here so this knife from Isa Smedan it has quite a large distance Whereas it's much tighter here from Fredrik Spore. But in my opinion, it's not it's not that big of a deal, to be honest. As long as there is perhaps this size of gap, you will fit in comfortably. Uh, but opinions may vary here. I am totally opposed to knives being all the way flush with the choil. Because that can really cause strain on your middle finger. Because your thumb will push the blade into your finger and you will you'll get uncomfortable. When it comes to western handles it's more difficult because this handle is placed in a way that I would discourage from it if it was a if it was a Japanese handle. But it's nicely faceted in the front. So when I grab the knife uh, the thumb is pushing on the handle back 
and the finger is pushing on the blade forward. So the knife is really well, well locked in. And I'm not uncomfortable in any way. But if the handle is further forward and the choil goes backward, you might get uh, your middle finger kind of cramped in there. Um, what I don't like is when a handle is placed too far back, especially if it's a handle with some angles in the front. Because what happens then is that you push the knife forward with your middle finger and your thumb can stop it. So you will slide back in your grip. So the handle placement on the Western knives is it's difficult to get right, especially when there are no when the transition isn't as, as sharp as in this one where it's chamfered. Uh, some other things to look for is to look how how it looks in in the glue joints. Here we have a, a tight fit between the handle and the blade. And all the transitions between materials are nice, there are no sharp edges, nothing to get stuck on. And I would also advise to, when you look at blades, that you look for uh, any deep scratches. Because if there are deep scratches, I mean, some makers sell their knives with really deep scratches, almost as a design feature, and I don't get it. Because the blade will rust quickly and it will be a nightmare if you want to polish it. Uh, and it might also be that the maker doesn't take the time to go through all the grinding to get a good result. So those are a few things that I usually look for. But um, just to recap, a few things that I, I think are good to look out for is that how thin is the edge bevel? It should be really thin and it should be consistent all along the blade. Make sure that there's no clad touching the edge um, and that the, the clad line follow the blades in, in a good way. If you go into Honiakis and if you pay that premium, you should want a nice looking sweep to the Hamon line. And don't accept a Hamon that goes down close to the edge. So hopefully this will help someone either trying to buy a knife or knowing how to better advertise the knife for potential customers.